This guy's probably going to kick the shit out of us, but let's... Let's see if we can get a couple hits off on him. I don't know how tough he's going to be. Welcome, everybody, to a new, probably short series on Osiris New Dawn. I'm an old guy gaming, and I have uh, I've been wanting to uh, try this game out since they came out with uh, the, the later updates. Uh, like many people, I played Osiris when uh, it first came out. Uh, you know, it came out actually in 2016, and some sometime, you know, two, three, four years ago, I can't remember exactly, uh, I played it a little bit and actually enjoyed the game, but for me, there wasn't enough content in the game at that point to, you know, to hold my interest for more than just a few hours. Um, so I, I still think, uh, too, from what I know about the game now, though they have added more content, it's still not the kind of game I think that, you know, that we could play for a long time and have enough to do. But I think there's enough new stuff to it that it probably uh, should work for, you know, just a short uh, series um, of, I, I don't know, I mean, I couldn't say how many episodes. It might, you know, might be a dozen episodes, maybe more. We'll see how things go. But I wanted to try it out um, and and just, uh, you know, see how it goes and uh, actually do, uh, like I said, a little series here on the channel. So um, this is not replacing anything that I'm currently doing. You know, we're still doing the, uh, the Undead Legacy series. We're still uh, doing the Valheim series and so forth. Uh, this is just kind of a... Uh, a, a side thing, you know, something a little a bit different uh, to do um, and uh, just have some fun with it. And again, um, I, I, I'm not expecting it to be a long playthrough. OK, so uh, this is also not a blind playthrough because I've watched a few others on YouTube play it. And I've also uh, started a little test game myself and played for a few hours just to kind of get a feel for things. Uh, so that being said, feel free you know, to leave tips and tricks. Um, if, if there's anything real major, you know, that could be spoilerish, I'd rather, you know, that you guys don't talk about that sort of thing. But, you know, if you have tips and tricks and things that you uh, see me doing that I could do better, um, you know, feel free uh, to leave those in the comments for sure. Um, so I do know a little bit about the game. I don't know everything about the game, of course. And the other thing I want to say before we get started is, you know, from what I've seen, uh, the game still has a lot of bugs. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's still some problems with this game and that's you know that's okay it's not it doesn't make it unplayable um and but you know it, it's not perfect it's still a work in progress uh, if you guys didn't know and i don't know all the details myself but the developers actually bought the rights to the game from the, the original uh producers uh and i don't even remember who that was um but the developers phoenix fire and since that happened, they have started to come out with more regular updates, which is a very good sign because, you know, that means there's hope for, you know, that the game will uh, will progress and eventually, you know, be completed. So uh, that's really good news. Uh, but I just, again, want you to be aware that, you know, there's a lot of bugs in the game at present. And so things, you know, are not always going to work correctly. And we're just going to have to work around those as best as we can. Uh, all right. So that being said, let's go ahead and start a new single player game. Uh, so we're going to create a new avatar. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Ranger class only because the Ranger class has an even distribution of points and we need stuff in all three of the trees, the science, engineering, and combat trees. Whoops. Uh, oh my goodness, that's loud. Um, so we're going to go, yeah, we're going to go with the Ranger class. Um, if you guys prefer one of the other classes, let me know in the comments um, why you prefer the other class, what the advantages are. I mean, obviously you have, you get more science, you get more combat, you get more engineering here, but you know, I would, I would imagine that in the, you know, in the long run, it probably doesn't matter because you can eventually probably get everything. But, you know, from what I've seen and what I've experienced with, through my test playthrough, uh, you really need stuff in all three of these trees, um, right at the, you know, as soon as possible. And so, you know, this seems to me to be the best class, you know, for starting out. But just, you know, let me know your opinion and your experience with it uh, if you uh, have, um, you know, if you like one of these other classes instead and why. Okay, so let's confirm that. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on character creation, uh, but we'll do a couple of things here. Let's go. These colors do not correspond either with this, by the way. See, I'm clicking on this blue and it's not... <laughs> It doesn't look like that. So that's one thing that they need to fix. Um, so I'm going to kind of click more on this purplish color. 
Um, for our primary, our secondary color can be black, which it more or less already is. Our detail color, um, I'd kind of like it to be, you know, more, well, let's just make it red. That's fine. And then the glow, um, let's look, make the glow more of a white, whitish. I think that, does that affect like these little lights here? I think it does. It's kind of hard to see. So, yeah, we'll just go with that, and then we'll confirm. I'm not going to mess with any of this stuff. It's fine the way it is. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so for stats, um, you have to be kind of careful with speed because you can actually make the character too fast, and then he's hard to control. Um, so I think I'm going to just put, like, a couple of points into speed, maybe a couple of points into stamina, and then we're going to go uh, health and strength, three points each there uh, to start with. Okay. Um, and now our, our skill points. So we have 10 points to start with. And like I said, we're going to put points into everything. So we're going to need, let's look at combat first. We have to take the stone axe just because it's a prereq. And then we're going to need the furnace. And we're going to, um, how many points is this? That's six. And this is four. So we might as well take this because we need this to get down uh, here to the gun. So we want to get to the guns fairly quickly because... Um, well, we, we, the thing is, is I think we need the workbench before we can actually make these things. So maybe we should just save those points and hit the workbench next. And then we'll focus on getting down to the guns. Um, the guns in this game currently as it is are pretty OP. Melee, on the other hand, is actually a little bit tricky from my experience. Um, it, you can't just go and start whacking stuff. You have to kind of time the hits, um, just right, I've noticed. And so, um... You know, we, we don't want to rely on melee. We want to get into guns as soon as possible, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so for engineering, of course, we need the pick. We're going to need the shovel. Um, That's going to be really important because we need use this to get sand, which is components we need for science. But I think what we'll do first, though, is go for depositories because uh, of storage. Well, I suppose we could use the scrap storage containers. They just don't carry hold very much is all um yeah i mean we need both of these we really do um maybe we'll yeah let's just go for the depository screw it uh we'll do we'll we, we will prioritize the shovel next though um that's what f uh, six points okay um for science we have to start with the flare which i've never actually used and then we're gonna fast track to uh, the chemical station and the printer. Uh, so we need, and the forge, of course, uh, which we need as well. Um, okay, so that, this is going to be more than four points. Yeah, so that pretty much uh, takes care of our, our starting points, and then we'll continue, you know, using that stuff as we go along. So we're going to save the science points. What is this? Yeah, see, that's five points. We do need that before we can start a base. And we're going to save the combat points um, to get the table, which is also, uh, which is actually six points. But we'll, you know, those points will come along pretty quick. All right, let's confirm this. Um, we're just going to call this um, OG. And I'm going to play the game on normal. Um, I'm not good enough with it, uh, along with, you know, just kind of the the bugs and 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 I, you know, no pun intended, I, the bugs literally and the bugs as in terms of the code not working. <laughs> Um, extreme, I think would be a very, uh, hard challenge. And that's something I might try at some point in the future, but for now, we're just going to, we're going to go with normal, uh, with the current state of the game. Okay. Um, and then, uh, there's a, there's the ability to customize. Oh, you know what? Let's actually look at this for a second. The one thing that I would maybe like to change if we can is the day cycle time cycle. Um, because the problem with Osiris in the early game is that require pressurization to eat. Hmm, interesting. Um, why would you not allow space travel? That is weird. I don't I don't I don't understand that. First person hit reaction. What's that? Creative mode. First person hit reaction. So this means that I get Staggered if I get hit? I'm not sure what that means. Um, the one thing I would like to change, though, is the daytime, because here's the thing. In the early game, you don't want to be outside at night. And so what you end up doing is sitting, hunkering down in your hut for a very long period of time, not doing a damn thing. Um, I mean, you can, I guess you can dig sand, 
uh, for science points in sand, but you know that that doesn't really make sense because if if you were doing that for real, you would uh, you know dig a hole in your tent. But whatever. Uh, anyway, so the thing is though is I don't see an option here for changing um, for changing the day versus the night. It's just the cycle itself. So, I mean, we could make the, we could slow down the cycle, but then that means, you know, we're going to have longer days, but we're also going to have longer nights too. So, you know what? I guess we're not going to screw with that. We're just going to leave it the way it is. We're just going to leave it the way it is. Eventually, you know, when you get to a point where you can be out at night and it's not a big deal. It's just really only going to be an issue with the early game. So we're going to um, require pressurization to eat. So does that mean you have to be inside of a pressurized chamber or does it just mean you can't eat if your suit's damaged? I'm not really sure what that means, but you know what? Let's, let's turn it off for now because I haven't played with that and I'm not sure what the ramifications are of that exactly. Uh, I am going to leave this first person hit reaction thing on though, because I'm not sure what it is, but it seems to me like it probably staggers us a little bit or something, which could be more realistic. So we're going to try that and we'll see how it goes. Otherwise I'm just going to leave everything else the same for now. Okay. Um, Let's confirm and confirm and, oh, I guess we have to hit create. Oh, shoot. First person hit reaction. That's the only thing we changed, right? Okay. And then create. There we go. Okay. So let's do this, man. Let's have some fun. This game, um, it is actually a lot of fun in the early game. Um, but like I said, it, at least in the past, we just couldn't... Uh, Okay, here we gotta grab the duct tape. We have to put the duct tape in our um, thing and then press five and left mouse button to patch our suit. Okay, now we gotta pick up the bandage and we can also um, use it just from here too. Uh, but you know, your suit's gonna get damaged a lot so uh, it's a good idea to keep this on your hotbar anyway. Okay, so now it wants us to exit and leave the escape pod. So what we need to do is hit F, but we can't open the door. So now it wants us to use our chisel to break it open. And then press F to exit. There we go. Okay, so we do have um, some missions. They're not really very well fleshed out at this point, uh, but they're, they're more like tutorial types of things. So we'll, you will kind of be following those as we go along. That's basically saying we can go into third person um, by pressing V and then back into first person. I don't use third person a lot. I kind of don't really like it that much. I mean, it's okay, I guess, for some things, uh, but we're going to be in first person for most of this playthrough. Okay, so now uh, what it wants us to do is go along and salvage uh, the space debris. So we use this little thing called our multi-tool here, and we just click on it and we can salvage this. Some things we can pick up. All of this is just kind of, you know, stuff that has scattered uh, from the the pod crash because apparently we crash landed on the planet. Um, kind of like, you know, a little bit reminiscent of Empyreon start, except for in this case, you know, we it doesn't start with us crashing down to the planet. We're just already on the planet. So uh, let's grab those oxygen tanks. So all of this stuff is going to be useful to us. Uh, for getting started here in the game. The way the game works, though, is when you're doing salvage like this, you can only take the panels off. It doesn't let you do anything with, like, the frames or the seats and stuff inside. So it's just, again, kind of the way it works. Okay, so we've got all that done. We're going to keep looking for space debris. And you can find the space debris scattered all over the whole map. It's not just uh, near the crash site. So we're going to grab that stuff. And you just want to look around again, like I said, for uh, any materials and debris that you can uh, put to use. Because, uh, you again, we're going to need all of this stuff here in the early game. So basically, the space debris is kind of like your initial building material uh, that you're going to use in the game. All right. So let's just double check. And now you can also pick up animal parts and you can make some things with those. Um, one of the things that I actually might try to do is if we can pick up, yeah, you have to really look in the grass because some of this stuff's hidden. Um, if we can gather enough crab parts, we can actually make our hut out of 
uh, crab parts instead of out of debris. And the, the advantage of that is then it saves the debris for other things, like, you know, making more containers and that sort of thing. Um, so let's, uh, yeah, let's just kind of look around. So see, I put like, I think two points into speed. I mean, look how fast my character can run. I mean, that's really, really pretty darn fast. So, um, you kind of don't really want to go much faster than that, or it's going to be hard for your, to, for you to control your dude. So we'll pick up all these bug parts. The bug parts are not super useful, except for the very early game. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll just... We'll use what we can of them, and then after that, we'll we'll probably... I don't know if we'll keep them or what we'll do, but anyway. We got another section here, so let's go ahead and uh, salvage all of this stuff. Osiris is not a procedurally generated map. These are all, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Handcrafted maps or pre-configured maps. Um, so, you know, that... Maybe someday, I don't know, they'll make this an, a, a procedurally generated map, but right now it's the same map that everybody plays on uh, in the single player. I think. I don't, as far as I know, I don't think you can. Uh, can I reach that from here? Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's random gen maps in here. At least not right now. Okay, why can't I? There we go. Oh. Gotta be right on the right spot there to get this stuff. Okay, I think we got everything out of here. We do have a little jetpack, uh, too. Okay, so we have enough. Oh, you know what, though? I just remember something. We have to build the debris hut for the quest. Um, but what you can do is build it and then take it back down and recover some of the materials for other things if you can build the crap hut. All right, now, the next thing we want to do is we want to run this direction. And off in the distance there, there's a solar panel and a radar dish. And that location is right next to the, uh, what's called the beta mine, which we're going to be using a lot to get uh, resources, get skill ups, and that sort of thing. Um, so, so I kind of want to go ahead and set up our initial base uh, in this area. It, so that's the beta mine there, which we will be going into. Um, we won't, probably won't set up our permanent base in the beta mine, uh, but we'll probably set up our initial base in this general area. And the other thing about Osiris is, you know, there's no terraforming, so you want to, um, you want to, you know, pick a, a, a large flat area to build your base so you have enough room to build things. Um, so you know, just kind of keep that in mind. So this little valley here would be good. We have a fair amount of width and we have a lot of length that we could expand to if we decided to actually stay here permanently, which we might. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. Um, so yeah, and we're just right on the other side of the beta mine. So why don't we go ahead and set up shop here. So what I'm going to do is uh, press F3 and that takes you into the build bin. Now as far as the inventory goes, uh, if you hit tab, it opens up this radial menu and then from here you can pick uh, you know, various other menus that you can get into. Uh, but if you just directly hit F2, you can get right into your inventory. If you just directly hit F3, you can get into your build menu and so on and so forth. Uh, so what we're going to do is hit F2, or sorry, no, F3. And we want to go to the structures. So it looks like I do have enough material to build a crab hut. Um... Yeah, we do. Uh, but we need to build the debris hut so that we can um satisfy the quest so let's just build it here um you can also raise it up too which for the hut it doesn't matter but for other buildings later on where you're going to you know be connecting other stuff you really want to build it up high so that way you have more ground clearance um but in our case um we don't need to do that so you just use the mouse wheel to adjust that and then uh, press f to build and then hold f to actually build it there we go. So we've completed that part of the mission. Um, what we're going to do now, though, is we're going to actually... Um, okay, now it wants us to build a space debris chest. But before we do that, let's go back into our build menu, which is F3. Um, and go to Structure. And let's build a, a crab hut. And, you know, the crab hut's not any better or any worse than the debris hut. They're pretty much the same thing. And... I guess we'll put it 
right here-ish. Okay, we'll hit F and hold F. So, you know, I again, I don't know if this is stronger or not as strong as this, but in my test playthrough, I mean, it worked fine. I didn't have any problems with it. The monsters that, you know, uh, the monsters that came after us, you know, weren't able to break or anything like that, so we were good. Okay, we're going to take this back apart so we can get some of the materials. We don't get all of them back, but we do get some of them back. And um, so that way we have more space debris to do other things with. Now, another little trick that I learned in my test playthrough is that if you set up your equipment um, kind of in a perimeter, the monsters that come after you, they won't, uh, at least not the, the smaller ones, they won't be able to, like, jump your equipment, and they don't really seem to damage it either. They'll just try and path around it to get to you. Um, so, that being the case, then we're going to use uh, our early game stuff to actually also help uh, enclose us in, in a perimeter here. Okay, so it wants us to build a space debris chest, so we'll do that here. Let's rotate it this way. And again, we're going to set it up in such a way that it'll block any uh, enemies that are going to try and get to us. Let's um, let's make this a little bit of a wider uh, peri uh, a perimeter, too. Okay, so we're going to build that. Okay. Um, now it wants us to build a furnace, but I think what we're, we'll do... Well... Okay, hold on. Let's take a look at our, our build menu here. So, furnaces is in utility. And we need a barrel before we can build that. And some more space debris. Um. Okay, What what's the depository require? Okay, so we're going to need iron and aluminum for that. So, we're going to have to go into the, the beta mine to get that stuff anyway. What about the forge? Yeah, same thing. Okay, so we can't build... Um, the furnace until we find a barrel. And usually you can find those in loot. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go here and we're going to set our save uh, save point so that way when we if, if we die we respawn right here. Um, and you can save like every five minutes uh, in the game too and you have to do it here in your hut uh, or later on when you make a bed. Okay? Um, so... Usually there's at least one barrel floating around. How many did it say we needed again for that? Let's take a look. Furnace. Uh, just one. Okay. Let's go look around some more and see if we can locate a barrel. Um, here's, here's another interesting thing about the game as it currently is. Stuff respawns. So you can open up. Oh, there we go. Look at that. A barrel. And we also have some lithium ingots. That's actually pretty good. Okay. Let's take that. Um, stuff respawns, so I can come back here later on, and this crate will respawn. Um, it's just the way the game works. I think that's a little, I don't know, it's a little cheaty, I think, to be honest with you, but it's just kind of the way the game works. So we're going to go into that mine. We're going to clear it. Um, oh, you know what? Let's also harvest this stuff uh, for more debris. We're going to clear it, but then we can leave the mine and step back into it, and then the whole thing resets again. So... I, you know, I, I'm, I'm have a mixed feelings about that, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because I don't know, it, it just seems a little cheaty. But from what I know, I think the game is designed that way. I don't think it's an exploit. I think that's what the developers intend for you to do. So I guess, you know, here's the thing, though. You can't just waltz in there and grab all the loot, come back out, waltz in there, and grab all the loot, come back out, waltz in there, and grab all the loot, etc., etc. Every time you go in there, the monsters reset too. So, you know, on the bright side of all of that, at least you have to fight your way into it to get the stuff the second and third and fourth and fifth time around. So, you know, that kind of bounces out a little bit. The other advantage to fighting the monsters is A, you get combat points, and B, um, they, they drop stuff like meat that you can actually use. So it's, it's a worthwhile thing to do. So, anyways, like I said, that's just kind of the way the game works, and, you know, that's that's what we have to play with. Okay, so, let's go back and get our furnace built now that we found um, a barrel, and we also found some more uh, debris, too, from those robots, which is great. Serious dehydration detected. Okay, did we find any water? Let's look in our inventory. We did. Okay. Yeah, we need a drink because we're in bad shape water-wise. Um, how is our... Yeah, our nutrition's down too. So, 
Um, let's go back in here. So the way these guys work here is they're they're a circular gauge. So your hydration and your nutrition is one gauge. And when stuff starts to drop too low, it turns from like this white color to this orange color um, as you know as it's reduced. So right now uh, the temperature is really cold for us, but there's nothing that I can do about that. So you always have to deal. I'm assuming that uh, colder temperatures probably cause us to consume food faster. That's usually what happens in these games. Um, and maybe also, you know, we regenerate health slower or something. Because actually, I don't think we regenerate health at all. We have to use health packs and bandages for that. Uh, so anyway, we do have three meat stews. So let's just eat one of those uh, right now. And that gets us all the way back up on our hydration and nutrition. Uh, but food's not generally a problem in this game because you can get food from the trees, which we'll look at. And again, like I said, when you start fighting all the monsters, you can get food from them too. All right, let's go ahead and go into utility and uh, build our furnace. There's a there's a cool thing about the furnace too, um, and this is new in the game, new, well, since the last time I played it anyways, and that is that the furnace will uh, also distill water for you too, uh, which is really nice. So it's useful to actually probably build a couple of those um, for water. So over time, this will start to fill with water. The other thing we use the furnace for is we use it to... Um, Oh, we can't have that in our hand while we're accessing this. Uh, we can cook meat in here, and we can um, smelt the more common types of ores in here and make uh, glass and glass containers, which we need to store water and, and well, mostly store water. I think we can, maybe we can store other things in there too, but water for sure. Um, okay, cool. So we got that. Whoa, shit. Okay, we found our first monster. So what we're going to do is get our knife out. And here's the thing. You've got to... You have to hit it just the right moment uh, to attack these guys. It, it's uh, it's a little tricky. See, I didn't. I actually got a little close to him. There we go. So the knife is actually, even though it's a short range weapon, one advantage that it has is that it has 50% crit damage. So uh, it's actually a pretty damn decent weapon, more than you might think, because of that crit damage. Okay, so we got a piece of meat off that guy. Now there's another dude out here that I, I saw out here somewhere. Uh, I don't know where he went. Um, uh, okay, so one thing you can do is if you get a bunch of monsters after, you can actually kind of hide in your hut. Now, some of them, especially the smaller ones or the ones with longer appendages, can still sometimes swipe at you inside the hut, but it does, you know, at least you have one area that you have to defend in here because they can't hit, you know, hit you from behind. Uh, so, you know, you can always retreat to your hut if you need to. All right, so we got one piece of meat off this guy. So what we're going to do is, um, depending upon the type of alien it is, um, you know, it could be auric meat or tumbo meat or alien meat or whatever. Uh, but it's the one that has the green plus is the one that you can cook. If you click once, it'll just cook or process one item. If you click the, uh, the green plus thing here, then it'll process all that you have in your inventory. Okay, and then you have three outputs. You can grab that, and then you can use that uh, to to heal and also uh, for nutrition. Now let's open this thing up. This is a very small storage chest. We don't have a lot of stuff in here, but what we're going to do is we're going to put all of no, not that. We're going to put stuff in there that we don't need. This we can actually. Oh shit! You son of a. Vitals dropping. Yeah, the knife is really. I don't know, at least for me, it's a, it's a little uh, tricky to use. So, uh, let's see. Our health is now 75% down, so the bar turned orange, if you look in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to eat this, and it's going to give us um, some health back, but, but it's also going to give us nutrition. So the meat's actually very useful. Okay, so we got another piece of meat from that bastard. Uh, let's go ahead and cook that up again. And... While that's cooking up, um, let's put a couple more things in here. So we don't need to carry this around. You can just shift click. I've never used the flare ever. Uh, we're not going to need lithium anytime soon. Let's put this big med kit down here in case we need it. We also have 14 bandages, which is pretty good. Uh, we don't need the, ban uh, the battery for the moment, Tim. We don't need the steel for the moment. So we'll put that stuff in there uh, or the rubber. Uh, these, I think, I think the way the oxygen works in this game... Um, is that your suit 
is somehow magically capable of generating... What the hell? Oh, that was just the lid that closed. Uh, of generating oxygen on the planet's surface. So I guess it has some kind of oxygen, you know, condenser thing on it, you know, that can do that. But when you're in space, it can't. So that's, so I believe you need the oxygen tanks for when you go out into space, I think. I'm not 100% positive on that, but I think that's the way that it works. Wow, that guy's like running away the hell away, isn't he? We scared him off. Of course, he's coming back now. Um, all right, so I guess, guys, the next thing we need to do is build a forge, which means we need to come up with the minerals that the forge requires. I don't know what his issue is. So there's a couple of ways to get minerals. The simple way, I'm going to say simple, not easy, is to go into the mine, and then you can get a lot of resources in the mine um, because they're just there for the taking. But, like I said, you have to fight uh, the monsters to get to them. The other way is you can run around and you can look for uh, mineral deposits on the map. Now, you also have this little radar thingamadoodle here, which is, like, really stuttery. And it has, um, if you notice the little purple dot that I'm approaching here. Oh, crap. We've got a big crab monster there. See, that's showing me that there's a deposit there. And that's actually this, you know, this, this stuff here. Now, I, I, I kind of know what they look like already, but I uh, don't think we want to tangle with the big crab dude right now. So you could also get, you know, minerals from these deposits on the surface if you can find them. But, you know... It's it's six one half does the other because if you go out on the surface, you know then you run into monsters like that. Uh, whereas if you go into the mine, you're gonna have a different set of monsters that you're gonna have to deal with. So I think original Osiris um, used to have shit. I don't think I want to mess with him with just a knife. Um, used to have actual you know dedicated iron deposits, but then it one point like a couple years ago I believe they changed it to where it's just a mineral deposit and then you can get different types of minerals this guy's probably gonna kick the shit out of us but let's, let's see if we can get a couple hits off on him I don't know how tough he's gonna be Okay, let's go to six and take a med pack real quick. See, we're almost one for one on the hits here. The hit the hit boxes are can be a little you know weird to get used to as well. Okay, he's running away. We got him. Okay, nice. So that was just a dead young crab monster level one. So the monsters can be different levels. Um, and, you know, the higher the level they are, the harder they are to kill, obviously. Um, and you can't really, as far as I know, you can't really tell what level it is until after you kill it, which is a little weird. But it is the way that it is, as far as I know. Now, remember, guys, I'm by no means am I an expert at this game, so... You know, definitely feel free to let me know if, you know, if I get something wrong or or whatever. Uh, okay, so we're going to go into here. I don't have um, any more food, but I, we do have these bandages, so we're just going to use... stabilized. We're going to use those uh, to get our health back. Now, these green plumes are chlorine gas. Excuse me, I think there's four different types of gas in the game. There's chlorine, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Maybe there's another type too. I'm not sure, but those four, anyways. And uh, we need those to make stuff, um, but we we need barrels to to get it. Okay, so now as far as the minerals go, the way that I think that it works, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, is each mineral deposit has different hardnesses. So this is a 2.5 hardness, and I believe in general the softer it is, the lower the level of minerals. So if you need higher level minerals, you need to find a deposit that has that's harder. I think that's the way that it works. Um. So this is a 3.5 hardness. So we're getting iron and aluminum. What we want to find, I believe, is titanium and iron, I think it is. Let's look at the build menu. 
Oh, and oh, and plutonium too. Okay, um, we should be able to get the plutonium um, in the mine, I think. Uh, the titanium, we might be able to get in the mine, we might not. So, okay, so let's kind of look around here too. Now, you'll notice on my compass, it shows my hut uh, up at the top there. So, you know, that way you can always get back. All right, so we're starting to have dehydration issues again. So let's head on back here. This is a 3.4 mineral outcropping. I'd really like to find some titanium, though, because um, that's a 3.4. Uh, in my test playthrough, I, I went into the, the beta mine like three different times, and I never found any titanium. I had to find that out on the surface. So I don't know if that's just RNG or what the deal is, but I'd like to find some if we can. All right. So our hydration and our nutrition is not the best. Let's head on back here. So this has a, a, a little bit of water built in, in it. Not a ton, but a little bit. So let's grab our water thing. And I'm going to actually put these down here for now. Select the water and then hit F to extract. And now what we can do is drink this. Hydration levels are now satisfied. So if you can't get access to water, what we can do is go to uh, these trees here. And there's a few different things that we can we can do. Um, if we hit these plants, we get science experiments uh, experience um, and XP. And the tree, the 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 fernberry tree, if you hit here, if you sit here or stand here, whatever, and start whacking on it, oh, it's that's weird. It, it's hitting it, but it's not making the normal whack sound like it usually does. You can see that these berry things are dropping from the tree, so those are going to help us um, with both hydration. Okay, so not, I'm not getting any more points and nothing else is is done. So we've exhausted the tree for now, but it'll reset later. I think probably the next day. So we can grab these berries, and the berries can be used to uh, for hydration. Um, but the problem with these berries is they also take a little bit of health away. They give you 7 nutrition, 12 quench, which is pretty good, but they do take 2 health away, which is not a lot, but, you know, it's it's... It is something. Um, so you can use these, you know, for water if you if you don't have an actual water supply in, in a pinch. But just watch your health. Um, so these urchin shells, I don't know. I don't know if you can use these or not. I, uh, well, they say they're consumable, but you get minus 15 health and nutrition eating them. So why in the hell you would? I guess it does say we can cook them and craft them. So I guess it's something maybe we use in a cooking and or crafting recipe later. I'm not sure what that is. Um, fern are used to make a number of different items. So yeah, just stuff, you know, that you can collect and, and use for crafting. Uh, the other type of tree is this red tree and it also gives, uh, red berries. See, this one's making the hit noise. The other one wasn't, which is really weird. So we just keep hitting it until you don't see anything happen in the upper left-hand corner. We're, okay. No more viable resources together. Okay. And then this dropped, uh, dropped, rather, a bunch of these red fern berries. And these guys, we can straight up consume um, for 18 nutritious and 3 quench and health. So these are actually better for food, and they don't take any health away. These are better for hydration, but they take a little bit of health away. The other thing we can use these for, though, is we can take... Uh, these blue palms, leaf thingamadoodles, and we can make um, makeshift bandages from them. So if you run out of the main bandages, you know, you can just make them here. And these only heal 10 health per, but you can spam them. So if you have a whole stack of them, you can just spam them really quick and get your health back up. Uh, whereas the bandages that are in my number six slot, you know, those are more involved to craft, even though they, you know, they, they uh, heal more. Okay, and then there's other other trees and plants, you know, that you can harvest. Like these give you branches for certain things and whatnot. So what you can do is you can harvest this stuff. Uh, even if you're not going to use the resources, harvesting it gives you science. So it's really, oh shit, 
It's really the best way in the game, um, in the early game anyways, to get your science skill up. Plus you're also gathering stuff that you're going to need, right? So, and you're going to, you're going to be periodically attacked by monsters. Some of them are easy to kill. Some of them take lots of hits depending upon their level and I guess maybe the type of creature and whatever. So this guy was a level three, um, hunter, hunter parasite. So he was a, you know, took a few more hits than some of the other ones did. Okay, so, um, I think, guys, that is it for, uh, this first episode. Uh, so what we're gonna do in the next episode, didn't I just kill you? Is we're gonna go into the beta mine and get more resources there. And, uh, hopefully we'll luck out and we'll find some titanium in there so we can make our, 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 uh, forge. Because we need the, we really need the forge before we can start doing anything significant. Um, so let's go back to our hut and uh, we have we have some meat to cook so we're just gonna hit the green thing and it'll cook everything we have in our inventory and I'm going to store uh, well I can I guess I can only store one more thing so it doesn't really matter we can store the urchin crap in here we actually have enough rocks to make a wall too so Let's actually do that before I let you guys go. So we're going to go to structures. Um, wait, structures, utility. We're going to choose rock wall. It takes eight stones. Let's turn it this way. So again, we're going to kind of make ourselves a little perimeter here. And the rock walls will stop small and medium creatures. The really, really big ones, I think, can crawl over. But we probably don't need to worry about really, really big ones for now anyhow. So yeah, we're going to kind of just... Oh, shit. What was that? Oh, we're we're starving. Okay, um, let's go get our critical starvation detected. Let's eat these. We'll eat two because our we were down quite a ways there. And uh, yeah, I think we're we're back in back in business. Okay, I'm gonna save the game here so we don't lose any progress and let you guys go and in the next episode we will hit the beta mine hope you guys enjoyed this episode and if you did please hit the like button subscribe to the channel leave a comment share out the video and again let me know in the comments any tips tricks uh, about the game and uh yeah that's it we'll see you next time bye